Hello everyone and welcome back to TSW2. Today, if you can still hear me over the noise of that unit, we're having a look at the Dresden to Chemnitz route. Although we're actually going from Chemnitz to Dresden for this run. This is a brand new German route that was released just this morning I think. And in a way, it's kind of a continuation of the existing Nachwerke Dresden, in the sense that it also this version also includes Dresden Hauptbahnhof, which obviously we will see later. Although most notable is this, the DB VR612, which, despite being the post kind of the poster boy for this route, for whatever reason, the 612 only appears in 22 timetable mode services which I think is an absolute joke so that means that ironically it's one of the least common trains that you'll see on this route when you're playing around in timetable mode okay I'm a little confused close passenger doors release passenger doors I think I might be doing. Am I doing? Some, I'm obviously doing something wrong here because no power on. There we go. That should do it. Yeah, this is of course a diesel unit, and I remember in the tutorial, I think it said that whoever was doing the voiceover said that this unit is powered by Cummins QSK19 engines, which are the same as what the Class 180 uses. Class 180, of course, being an English train. Right. Now, I must have, I must get, as I always find myself saying with when I do German videos, I do apologise if I end up pronouncing any place names wrong. Anyway, the first thing I've noticed, one of the first things I noticed when I was exploring Chemnitz Hauptbahnhof earlier, was that the mainline platforms, there's a few through platforms and then mostly but it's mostly terminus platforms and then you also have what look like lower level platforms which I've later found out uh, for a Strassenbahn or tram system which was interesting because I didn't know that well I basically knew nothing about Chemnitz so obviously I wasn't aware that they had a tram system there's a dual carriageway which I would have thought would have it looks very basic in terms of its detailing of course this um, I already said my piece about the lack of services with this train so I won't probably I'll try not to go going on about that otherwise I'll sound like a broken record but um, of course the notable thing about the 612 is that this is the first German DMU in TSW and it's also the first tilting train in the game Yeah, I didn't even know. <laughs> Just thinking how silly it was when I saw the uh, pre release screenshots of this thing and didn't realise that it was only a two car unit. Hello, what's that over there? Ah, oh, it's 143 in Doppelstock Wagon coaches. Yes, the acceleration of this thing is not very good. And the way, I just realised that the way you work the throttle on this thing really does remind me of the DB BR363, which is a diesel shunter that you do get with this route as well, which is, even though it was copied and pasted over from Nachburg and Dresden, and that version was, was technically, uh, the same, was basically the same type of locomotive as what we saw in an earlier add-on for Rorsig Nord, except that version was red, and the one from Nachburg and Dresden was or is in an older blue and off-white livery and it's that same blue and off-white that you see on this new route. First thing I've noticed as we're leaving Chemnitz is uh, the gradient is a lot steeper than I thought. But anyway, yeah, on this run to Dresden today we will be calling only at... is that... Floha? Floha? Was it like Vein Bowler? You see on the other Dresden roads. Hello, what's the station? That's the other thing. Working departure boards, always always a plus. 
This one is Chemnitz Hilbersdorf. So, nice little station. Don't know how accurate it is to the real thing, of course. Hello, is that narrow gauge lines? No, it isn't. That, oh, it's that museum I lo loaded in earlier. So this is obviously like an old... Oh, that's a terrible screenshot. That's obviously like an old railway museum, but where the hell are all the old locomotives? I obviously don't know what's there in real life, but I'm thinking, why are they, why do they not even include static models of them? And something else that I think is a little strange is that the little posters that you see as like collectibles on this route show what appeared to well, definitely some type of German steam locomotive, but I think it's like the uh, Kriegslok 210s that Chris Eden Green was so fond of, from memory. Well, I don't know if he was fond of them, but I know that he has mentioned them quite a few times in his videos, but anyway. I'm thinking, so there's that... This is almost like a... Get your tinfoil hats on, lads. Um, this is almost a bit of a conspiracy that... A while ago, Dovetail teased something on their roadmap called the Spirit of Steam. There's something coming to TSW. But as it stands now, they have not yet stated what the... But they still haven't made any indication as to what that will be about. So I'm wondering if it's about the uh, it's about German steam. But I'm just thinking like this like Train Sim World has been out since 2017, the better part of five years ago now, and we still have not got a single steam locomotive in the game. It's just been the whole. So far, it's only been diesels and electrics. And speaking of that lack of steam, that is the sole, pretty much the sole reason why I have never got the West Somerset Railway. Obviously, I do have the original train simulator version, but that is because, well, because I had got that a very long time ago, and at least that version has a couple of steam locomotives with it, even though they are not very good. I think it was the Great Western Modified Hall. 7F280 and the SDJR Prussian Blue. I realise that's got nothing to do with the, this route that we're driving on today, so I'll try to get more on, on topic. Let's see that we're going through the station, and this is Niederweser. I'm not obviously I, I'm not claiming to know how to pronounce that, and I've just realised too late that we need to slow down for a 100 km per hour speed limit. What I saw on the Steam product page, it was saying this route is about 79 or 80 kilometers, which is still not very long, but at the same time, I think it is probably one of the longer, if not longest, German routes we've got in the game. So it remains of an old bridge there. Um, and if, if this is the... Uh, longest German route in the game, then that already has, it's already got an approval from me. Although as far as I'm concerned, although I guess as far as Dovetail Games are concerned, I've already approved of this route since I've already gone and bought it. Speaking of routes and train sim world, I think I will be getting that Metro North Harlem line when it comes out. Even though that's obviously an American route and only an inc incredibly short portion of the overall Harlem line. Something like only they're only including like 23 miles of it, which is an absolute joke. And I've just realized that we're a hell of a lot closer to the next station than I thought. Mind you, we only left Chemnitz about nine minutes ago, and already that those nine minutes seem to gone by very quickly, somehow. Yes, I do find that when I do these sorts of videos where I can't essentially commentate over the gameplay, the journey does seem to go by a lot quicker than I think, even when it's one of these longer, slightly longer journeys like this. Flower. 
as I as always I do apologize if I've pronounced it wrong. And of course it always has to lag because that never gets annoying. Always do try to uh, come into the station very slowly in order to try and get stop and uh, stop as close to the right place as possible. And of course it's got the damn stop markers there. These like unrealistic bloody really coloured markers in the on the track, they always annoy me, especially when look, stop marker, it for some reason well, I always have it set to off. Yet for some reason it always forces it it often forces itself back on. If anything, that's just about as an that little I don't know if it's a bug or anything, but it's prob it's it, to me, it's so annoying. It can give this, or it's so annoying and useless. It could give this bloody action points system a run for its money, without referencing that overrated Pink Floyd song. Come on, blasted lag! It does my head in every time. It never seems to stop. So there's another problem. No branch lines. If there even were any. We're already late, but at this point I don't I honestly don't really care. Although more often than not I do try to be as punctual as I can. Actually let's see if I can get a screenshot of the train with the station sign. There we go. I just thought it's perhaps an opportunity to have a quick look through the train's interior. Even though, as I said, oh I might as well get the interior lights on. In a weird way, the interior of this de of this German diesel train kind of reminds me of the. Uh, where's the engine? Where's the interior lights? What the hell's GST? Well, I know in New Zealand that means goods and services tax, but I don't think that would apply in Germany. This light, useless. At least in this instance. Um, oh, that's PZB. Don't use that. Cab lights. <sighs> I'm not even going to bother trying to find the control for the interior lights. I'll just there's one particular part of the interior I want to want to show you all. Uh, because it partly because it reminds me here it is. Um, it's this funny little it part of the train that is that's got this artwork relating it's like this kid friendly artwork and it really does I'll tell you what it reminds me of. The some, one of the little parts of the interior of the Talent 2 on the Rapid Transit route. You know that three car silver version with S-Bahn Metal Deutschland branding? And... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why the 612 has got that. But there, you, but there you go. Probably trying to... Oh... Uh, that's why we're not moving, because they haven't released the brakes. Yes, the confuse this is already a little confusing because if any I'll tell you what it, this bizarre setup where there's this combined throttle and brake lever and yet there's an already a separate lever from the normal train brake reminds me of the uh, DB I think it's the DB BR474 on the Hamburg S-Bahn is that 474 from memory has uh, yeah, it has that same bizarre setup where there's the combined throttle and brake lever as well as a uh, conventional a separate lever for a different brake. I'm not sure why some of the some trains are designed that way. Although saying that, the last time I tried driving the 474 uh, was in a bit of a nightmare because well it was oh was it Hasselbrook to Hamburg Altona. And that was one of the most in infuriating runs I've ever tried doing in Train Simulator because, for some re for reasons I still don't really know, the frame rate was absolutely atrocious. And uh, there, there are some routes in that game where I just try to, where for some reason I've still got them installed, yet I don't drive on them at all because I simply, well, mainly because I. Uh, I just think the frame rates are so bad that 
they make the routes absolutely unplayable. And even with this computer that I've currently got, which is a suppose, supposedly it's a gaming laptop, and yet for the most part it absolutely struggles to run most of the games I've got. Like. Even with TSW, it doesn't seem to, it really ever seems to want to go above 30 frames a second, if you're lucky. And with like, and don't even get me started on bloody railroads online. I mean, for some inexcusable reason, that thing now barely gets above 20 frames a second. And previously, it was, well, up until a few days ago, it was doing like 30 to 40 frames a second, and I've got no idea what's going on with that. One of the first things, I, just going back to the Dresden to Chemnitz route again, one of the first things I've noticed is that, well aside from the BR612 being easier to drive than I thought, um, is that the gradients on this route are actually an awful lot steeper than I was initially thinking. I mean, it's almost like mine spit out barn, only with a lot more severe inclines. So I remember that route mostly has around like they're like one one hundred or roots or gradients of that nature. But there's that one particular bit with the Spessart rump, I believe it's called. Well this is actually quite a nice bridge. It reminds me of Calstock Viaduct in England. Which is on the branch on the line between Plymouth and Gunners Lake by the way. Um yeah mine Spessart barn is like well it's something like it's usually like one in one hundred or somewhere around there. But there's that one particular section of... Oh, we're coming up to another bridge. There's that one particular section of... Um, of, I think, one in... Yeah, one in 50 between... Is it, I think, Laufach and Heigenbroken. Which is called the Spessart Rump. Although, from what I gather, that old alignment was actually bypassed in 2017 by a newer... Uh, by a newer alignment that doesn't include such a brutal incline. So and that's so the mine spit out barn and TSW is actually kind of outdated in the sense that it depicts an older an older in, interpretation of the route between Aschaffenburg and Gemunden. And I was speaking of routes that are set in the past, I was pleasantly surprised to see that this Dresden to Chemnitz one is actually set in 2012. Which is curious because normally I think they just have them set in the present day. It's a nice bridge. I don't, come to think of it, I don't seem to recall seeing a route with such a steeply graded route as this since like Rhine Ruhr Austin, which is certainly quite a different beast. And speaking of different beasts, this 612 is a bit to drive with the way the throttle works. Let's try to get the again from the outside. To me that just sounds like a slightly altered, a slightly edited version of the recordings for the horns on like the 146 and 185 locomotives. Like the ones you get with Mein Spessart Barn. And actually, speaking of 185s, this is it Tehran to Ramp. <laughs> Again, apologies for horrific mispronunciation. <sighs> Just had a drink of water. But, um, it happened again. I forgot what I was. I forgot what I was initially trying to say. That always. I always find that. I always. F find that's happening with me most of the time, like when I'm trying to, when I'm talking to my parents or sometimes my friends. Yes, surprisingly I do have friends. Mostly one of the people I knew from school, that sort of thing. But I generally find myself slowly either mind wandering or some other reason I just end up forgetting what I was initially talking about, only to suddenly remember it again less than a minute later and then I and then I wonder what the hell's going on. I also wonder why I find the number 69 to still be funny. Okay. I'd hate to think what it would be like coming down this really steep gradient with a freight train. 
or even any or any other train come to think of it. No, oh, this is another station. This this is what this one's name is. This is Oidu Erduran. Um <laughs> I don't know for certain, but I think it would be Ur Erduran. Well, it's not not a particularly frequent service here. But yeah, for uh, <laughs> Or was that just deciding that I didn't notice it? Oh, it's just... Uh, this is all very confusing. Mind you, it's hardly surprising to see why I'm confused about this whole thing, because I this is my technically my first look at this route. Certainly the first proper attempt at driving the BR612, not counting the tutorials. Because generally I don't... Lo I don't like playing through the tutorials because I just find them a bit tedious and sometimes the voiceovers can be quite hard to listen to. Although that's not I'm not saying that the people that do the voiceovers are bad people, it's just that um, I personally don't like the way they sound on these voiceovers. It's probably like how some people think with me. Although if they do want in my case, if people do want to go and watch videos of mine where I don't do commentary, just look at anything I uploaded before December 9th, 2021. I dare say at some point I'll work out a proper driving technique for this 612. Kind of like what I did with the I think BR420 on, no not 420, uh, 423 on Hauptstrecke München to Augsburg. Speaking of the 420, that thing's mean, apparently that thing's meant to be coming out for TSW at some point, but I have no idea when, so. That's the other thing, is that despite the fact that I do play Train Sim World quite often and sometimes make videos on the subject, I'm really not very heavily involved with the actual community, if at all, to be honest. Um, although those, like, edited videos where I give an, I don't know if it's necessarily giving initial thoughts or anything, but Sometimes those t things where I do commentary on, like, edited videos with commentary explaining various things about the rolling stock, it was inspired by, if I'm getting, pronouncing the name right, Mystic Xenos, who I think is a New Yorker who often makes think, videos about TSW. And he's certainly been quite a bit of, he's certainly been a big influence for me to start getting a bit more to start being a bit more critical over on positive and negative aspects of these of certain parts of this game and actually speaking of negative aspects my god look at these bloody ground textures these are some of the worst I've ever seen like did Dovetail seriously n either do they they must not have noticed this or they didn't care frankly I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't care or if they did notice it and didn't care. Although they're probably thinking that the trains would be going by so fast that the passengers would, or that the people on board, or like the driver, or if they're just sitting there as a passenger, if they just wouldn't notice. But good aspects though, I think the whole, I guess the whole experience of driving the 612 Although I really do think that there should have been a lot more than just a pathetic 22 timetable mode services available for this train. Considering again that I'm pretty sure this thing is all over the, well pretty much all over the advertising for this route. And I, th from, I even read a dove, I think I once read it, no, sorry, I think the other week I even read a Dovetail Live article where one of the Presumably one of the PR guys from Dovetail was was interviewing some of the people that, or I think two of the people that worked on bringing this train to TSW. And I think they were just mostly going on about how exciting it was that this was the first gym and di- I'm calling this the monster station. Um, I think from memory it was mostly them getting all excited about how this was the f oh, this is the first German DMU and the first tilting train in TSW, and I'm 
not realise, probably presumably not realising that most people who have seen the advertising would already be aware of it. Is this another bridge? I'm surprised that I am actually able to notice these in decent time. Although I'll tell you what this one in particular reminds me, well, two bridges that this one reminds me of. Ribblehead and Owls Valley Viaduct in England. Ribblehead being on the Settling Carlisle line and Owls Valley, or is it or is it Ooze Valley? The, the second one I just mentioned, that's on the main line between London, Victoria and Brighton. Speaking of which, although I didn't record it, yesterday I, w I was doing a run from London, Victoria to Brighton with a class 377. I think I have put up a video of that run before, but it would have been without commentary, I dare say. Uh, <laughs> This is nice, we're still only about, still just over six kilometres out from Freiburg, Freiburg sucks, or as I might start calling it, Andrew sucks. If anyone knows about Faulty Towers, you'll understand that reference. Um, yeah, we're that far away from that station, and yet we're supposed to be there at 10.27. Actually, come to think of it, what's the time in real life? Oh, bang on 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, the time of day when I'm recording this video is obviously basically midway through the morning here in New, Ze New Zealand and that's something that I'll side make absolutely no effort to hide the facts or hide where I'm from I mean you can probably tell from my accents although you'd be I would forgive you if you thought I was Australian speaking of which one of my old mates from school is well she's a Kiwi but now lives in Sydney for, I won't say her name, of course, for the sake of her privacy. Klein... Sh Klein Schirmer? I think... Uh, I'm hopeless with these some of these pronunciations. I do remember saying earlier, I think at Floa... Floha... That I'm not too concerned with being punctual today. And to an extent, I still stand by that. Oh, um, I suppose we don't need to slow down too much because the incline will do it for us. I've noticed recently, like, I seem to have gotten a bit more of an interest in driving German routes, especially with, like, with EMUs, like the DB, BR425, and especially the uh, Talent 2. I don't know why, there's just something I really do like about driving those sorts of EMUs, and running to running running to a pretty tight timetable on a route with stop with quite a few different station stops over a relatively short distance. I guess it's just something about the fact that they're like trying to manage the unit's quick acceleration and braking with station stops that are very close together. And especially on that Hauptstrecke München to Augsburg between Hackerbrucke and Mammendorf, when you're taking the BR four two three on an S Bahn surface. Some, you really, in that instance, you really do have to pay very careful attention to how far away you are from the next station so that you don't enter the platform too fast and potentially miss the stopping points. And in that sense, the, that run, or that S-Bahn run on HMA with the BR-423 is one of the hardest runs I've ever tried doing in TSW. I, have tr I think I've pulled it off before, but it is very, very difficult to try and get uh, like an absolute perfect score. Although generally, I, frankly, I hate the concept of perfection, simply because it doesn't exist. Well, I, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I just think it's a bit of a silly concept because, in all seriousness, like almost nothing is, nothing really is perfect. It's like, I remember there was, as corny as it might have seen a reference this, I think it was a fairly odd parents character a few years ago who was written to be abso as absolutely perfect and having next to no flaws. And everyone going nuts over her, even Timmy Turner's dad for some reason. Um, and I always thought that was just a very strange part of the show. Although, speaking of which, really the only Nickelodeon cartoon I remember watching when I was younger was Spongebob. Or possibly cat dog as well. 
I don't know how I started blabbering about old childhood pro telly programs when driving a German thing in TSW. I mean, for the just initial thoughts on this route so far is that I don't hate it, but as always, there is so much room for improvement. Like I, here at Freiburg Sucks, for example, I was looking around the platform earlier, like spawning in on foot, and I was very confused when I was trying to look for departure boards, and it sort of looked like I could only see one on like platform four. I'll try to get over to it if I can. Oh, hello. There's um, another one of the newer, new additions for this route, the Railpool BR185 stroke six. That'll be, this will be featured in the next video. I'll try to do a light engine run on this thing. But when I first saw this being announced as being, well, when I first saw or it announced that this was being included, I was thinking, what the hell is rail pull? I'm still thinking that. Hello, what does that say? Flexibility for rent. I'd have thought that slogan would be in German. But actually, I wonder if it's, it is around the other side. No, it's still in English. This is obviously, like, I think the third... I think that... Well, that's probably not obvious, but this is still, like, the third variant of the 185 we have in TSW. I think the first was the 185 stroke 2. And... What on earth? Imagine this in, like, a... <laughs> I'm definitely getting a screenshot of that. I'd... Wouldn't be surprised if I saw this sort of thing in Harry Potter. Uh, not in TSW. I mean, even at, even in the Harry Potter films, I think the closest I saw to that was the kids phasing through the wall at King's Cross. But, well, there's a lot of things about this game I find strange. But yeah, from what I was saying earlier, this regarding this this new Dresden to Chemnitz route, I don't hate it but at the same time, there are already a couple of things that I find very strange about it. For example, for, for first thing, why does the BR612 have so few services available in timetable mode, despite being the, the post, I'm calling it the poster boy, because that's just me. Um, and the other thing, why is it that so often, that I've so far, that I've found the round foliage to be absolute pants. I mean, it's either it generally is that bad or uh, just something to do with my graphics settings and I just haven't really, I've just been a right big brain and haven't realised it. But I remember, I think it was the Clinchfield Railroad. Uh, that was particularly bad for missing, for some missing ground textures. as to what's going on. Something else I just thought to mention with Freiburg, the station that we've just left, which was Freiburg Sucks, is that I'm pretty sure it's the terminus for... <sighs> Bother. That up. It's the terminus for the S-Bahn Dresden S3 line, which is actually, I think, the only one of those three routes that starts and terminates at Dresden Hauptbahnhof. The other two, like lines S1 and S2, do serve the station, of course, but it's on those lines, it's an intermediate stop. And the other thing is that, yeah, this Dresden to Chemnitz route does, of course, come with the BR612, which we're driving now, that rail pull engine that I showed you just a few minutes ago, and then for whatever reason, they've copied and pasted over the driver's blind, it doesn't appear that it appears that it doesn't. And then the copy of, well the reused rolling stock that we've already had, which is the BR143 and Doppelstock Wagen coaches, and the BR363. And not saying they're bad, not saying they're bad engines and coaches, but I just think that surely on the surely the Dresden S-Bahn has used more than just those, that same fourth generation of double stock Falcon coaches. 
because I really would like to see more, even though I'm obviously not very knowledgeable on the history of German railways at all, or their rolling stock, I really do want to see like more, a lot more variation of uh, German trains in this game. And I guess, in a way, that's kind of what Dovetail have done with this BR612. Okay, I can't say I know what all these big masts are about, but this bridge model looks identical to the to one we saw earlier, which is a little bit suspicious. Well, at least, I was about to say, at least the flange squeal sounds are pretty decent. Yeah, these actually, these are, these flange squeal sounds are actually not bad, aren't actually all that bad. This is station is Bolton Hudson. Hmm. I suppose that's one of the more interesting things about driving along a route you're not familiar with is learning all these new place names. And then almost immediately forgetting them until you've driven the route enough times to actually remember all these names. This is this section is a bit weird because to me it feels like we're going up an incline, but I can see on that HUD there that this is meant to be straight and level. Well, he says that, and now it's going went downhill for a little bit. I wonder if there's any other runs you can do with this 612 that involve more than just two intermediate stops. I think I know why, well, I think I have a theory for why I'm so late, is that I'm just obviously not very good at driving the 612. One thing I don't like about this unit, and this is no fault of DTG and the developers, I just don't like the way these windows are designed and how they are almost like little doors. Because I'm used to. Oh, there's a fire extinguisher. Two fire extinguishers. But, uh, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know why the doors, are the windows are designed like that because I would have thought that. I would have thought that. Uh, It'll be something more conventional, like like a like a roller shutter, not really a shutter, but the window that you can like raise and lower. I don't, like what you see on the BR185 stroke two, for example, that sort of thing. Although it does remind me of the, it, I find it weird, like how much this unit actually reminds me of the uh, what is it, the Allegra, a narrow gauge EMU in Switzerland that you see on the Arosa line. Uh, that's an interesting thing. <laughs> Looks like the first coach is actually completely empty. It's only the second one that is in these passengers. Although I suppose with a driver as bad as me, it'd be, I'm not surprised that most people, but that there's not many people on this train. I tend to find that sometimes the trains that I drive in this game are actually very, or don't have anywhere near as many passengers as they should, especially on the Baker Lou line. Well, I just thought, and before I forget, what I'll, uh, I'll just thought to ask you guys, and girls, of course, what do you think of this route so far? And I've already said, I've already given my initial thoughts on, on this route, so yeah, I'm curious to know what, what you lot think. That's if anyone's actually watching this fucking thing. And with these gameplay videos, I don't necessarily do them to get views, I just do them because I enjoy it. As far as I'm concerned, that's, um, Possibly the best way to the best mindset to have when you run a YouTube channel. Even if it was like a real big one, like oh, what's an example of a big channel besides PewDiePie? Um, I suppose Grade A Underray, but I'm not sure if anyone else who watches me also watches him. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that name. I'm sorry. Look, I apologise in advance, even if even though I'm not saying it. <laughs> That'll be an S-Bahn station, I imagine. Anyway, um... Oh, for God's sake, I've forgotten again. So I certainly will have to... One thing's for sure is that even though I don't mind driving this train, she's obviously nowhere, she's nowhere near as easy to drive as the electrics. Actually, I've just thought, it's obviously all very well and good, for Dovetail to bring in 
a German DMU to TSW, but why did they still, why did they put it on a route that is electrified throughout? I honestly can't understand that. Because, oh, well, I mean, it's obviously representing services that presumably involve going along areas of or sections of track that aren't electrified. I think this particular service we're on has come from Nuremberg and it's going to Dresden. Um, and I don't know how much of that route, if any, is actually electrified. But yes, from what I can see, this 49 odd mile section between Chemnitz and Dresden does appear to be electrified throughout. There's yet another bridge. Not got. I haven't got. Obviously, didn't have the time to look at it at that time because I had my water bottle in the end. But yeah, I do think that since we've obviously now got the German DMU in the game, I really do hope that at some point we start getting like non-electrified German routes in the game. Although the only example I can think of for a non-electrified German railway is Hamburg to Cuxhaven. Although saying that, even then I'm pretty sure not all of that route is diesel only, because I think it's the S-Bahn services on that route, on that area, in that area, go as far as, I think, Stad, S-D-A-D-E. And I think, although I think the main service to Cuxhaven is run by diesels. What's that? Klingenberg Kolmnitz. As always, I really do apologise for these pronunciations. I really should I kind of think of it. I should have, I should have done what I did with Ruhrsieg Nord and, um, Looked up the looked up some of the pronunciation before I even started. But that's some that's something I do want to try and do in the future is learn the is learn how to speak German. Although as it stands now, I do know a lit a tiny bit of the language. Like obviously Guten Guten Tag, which is I think, isn't Guten Guten Tag. Isn't that how you say hello in German? Please do correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I was told in primary. That's what I was taught in primary school. And what's another one? I think Achtung or Achtung is that's German for attention. Uh, what else? Well, I know how to. I think I'm, I know how to count from one to eight in German at the very least. It's eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben. Acht und neun. I mainly learned that from playing the Frankfurt U-Bahn route. And actually, speaking of Frankfurt, this is going to sound really weird, but last night I had this really strange dream where like, me and my family were going on holiday to Frankfurt, and we had a ridiculously short time there of only like two or three nights, and everyone was getting, was like, dither everyone else except me was dithering about for absolutely ages not being able to decide what the hell they were going to do and, and what to bring with them and I was worried I was abs worried abs absolutely worried sick and thinking that we would barely have any time to do anything before we'd have to get back to the airport and I realize now that if I was in that sort of situation I'd probably just be able to go off on my own and go and see the U-Bahn trains or the mainline trains, of course. It's not just the U-Bahn in front. front U-Bahn obviously isn't the only railway in front for us. Hello, that action point score is a, a DF number, 6317. It was a diesel locomotive that would have been built for the Zealand Rail in 1981, I think. She got rebuilt as... Well, she's since been rebuilt as DFT 7036. Yeah, that was a very bizarre dream I had there last night. Almost reminds me of the, the line in the Alan Parsons song, Psychobabble, 
I think the line's like, I'd tell you about a dream that I have every night or something. Speaking of Alan Parsons' project, who else, is, who else out there has heard who is familiar with uh, Sirius and Eye in the Sky? That's, come to think of it, that's probably, for all I know, that's probably the, mo the most well-known song, or rather two songs in one that Alan Parsons' project has ever done. Certainly, certainly the two songs that introduced me to them. And it's kind of like Pink Floyd's The Happiest Days of Our Lives in Another Brick in the Wall Part 2, where you basically can't play those songs separately, have, especially with Sirius and Eye in the Sky, because they kind of... Uh, it's technically two songs in one, as confusing as that may seem. But, it's, uh, yeah, with, especially with Sirius and Eye in the Sky, you absolutely cannot play those two separate, as far as I'm concerned. Speaking of like artists and signature songs, I think that um, I think I just realised that Sirius and I in the Sky basically is Alan Parsons' signature song. It's uh, kind of like how I guess Money, Money, the Sultans of Swing or Money for Nothing would be like Dice Straits' signature song. This is certainly some very different, very different landscape to what we were seeing earlier. This is like another. This is like a fusion of Mind Space Art Barn with Ruas Ignored in terms of the style of scenery. But on our, I think on MSB could at the very least routinely go up to about 120 kilometers an hour throughout most of the route. But with Ruas Ignored, you rarely get above 80. And I guess even with Dresden to Chemnitzia, that's a nice little station. That little building kind of reminds me of the old pizza restaurant we used to go to in the world of Elder Krona. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm... Or oh, Edel Krona. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Krona is... is a currency in Denmark or Norway. I think it's Denmark, but don't quote me on that. Come to think of it, I don't even know what currency Germany... I don't know for certain what currency Germany uses. Although I would hazard a guess and say that it's probably just Euros. That's the other thing I just thought of. If anyone else who's more knowledgeable on the 6.2s is watching... Like, if you've heard the engine sound at all throughout me talking, like, how accurate are they? I do remember saying, hearing in the tutorial that this, this thing has uh, Cummins QSK-19 engines, and I vaguely remember what these what they sound like, and um, yeah, I think, although I can't still can't really comment on how accurate the sounds are in this game, because really I'm not an expert on how any trains sound in particular. Although, if by some miracle we were to ever get a New Zealand route in TSW, well, I guess even the Class 323 <laughs> for like the Birmingham Cross City Line or like Manchester to Glossop and Hadfield, in that instance, I'd be able to probably, I'd like to think I'd be able to comment on the accuracy of the sounds. Because that's one thing that, speaking of the Cross City Line with the Class 323, is that I think in that sense Dovetail royally screwed up with their rendition of the Cross City Line and the Class 323 in Train Simulator. I'm going to see if I can switch on this train in the river. It's pretty nice bit. So I think, whilst the route itself isn't too bad, the 323 that Dovetail made is terrible, if I'm being honest. Uh, it's okay modelling, but some of the branding is really off, and the um, and the sounds especially. Oh God, like I'm shocked that Dovetail got the sounds as badly wrong as they did, but I'm also not surprised because Dovetail are sort of notorious for bad sounds. Although I think they have certainly improved their. They do seem to be lifting their game with a lot of stuff in TSW. But what I see they're not lifting their game with is that... Oh my god, look at how much of that hill model is missing. 
did what went on like what the hell went on at, at like Chatham or Sterling during the development of this route because I've, I've seen that there's like missing yeah, this is Tarand itself like what the hell went on with the development of this route because like you just saw that bit of the that massive bit of the hill that was missing and you could see right through it as if it was a glass house like how I've never seen that sort of thing before on a TSW route and I'm just thinking how could Dovetail uh, how the hell did they like their quality like their quality assurance or quality control team like how the hell did they miss it or did they leave or did they not notice that for it to end up in the final product I do like these rock the detail into rock formations there's a lot of steep grades in this road but no I just for 37 New Zealand dollars I can't help thinking that I've been had in some ways I mean yeah there's those awful ground textures again but again uh, either in that sense it probably is just down to my graphics settings but to try and keep some form of decent frame rate somehow although if you try I've found that if, speaking of adjusting graphics settings I find that if you try uh, adjusting them in railroads online it doesn't seem it seems like no matter what you do it'll still run like a turd yes, yes another station this is certainly some pretty incredible scenery for just in front. Given that S-Bahn services run through here, that's Heinsburg Vest with some graffiti that I don't think is meant to be swear words. That's obviously said Chris WA7, unless that's meant to be a Y. I don't know what that whole thing means. What does that say? I can't really read that either. Oh, well. I'm gonna try and yeah, I'm not sure if I'll do that many videos on this route. One thing I do want to try though is a couple more train spot videos. Before I started recording this run, I decided I tried um what did I try? Um yeah, I just got some footage of trains coming and going from what the hell? I got some footage of trains coming and going from or at Dresden and Knits. This is curious, this is hang about. This is on a narrow gauge line with a narrow gauge coach. And I'm thinking if they've got a model if they've got models for like narrow narrow gauge coaches in the game. Perhaps get, get once again get your tinfoil hats out, lads. Um perhaps that actually means that the first German the first steam based route we'll have in the game for all I know that for all we know that could be German narrow gauge because like if so as, a, as we just saw they've got the model for the narrow gauge for narrow gauge coaches in the game so either they're just very dedicated to putting in the detail for that route or they are actually going to use the model eventually for making or for making narrow gauge German steam routes and that would be quite fascinating would it not? yeah that's just my theory that they put those narrow gauge model uh, the models for the narrow gauge coaches and just to tease us almost no, no need to have another drink Yeah, it is just I do just I do just drink uh, water, and orange, uh, water and fruit juice. Mind I don't I don't drink booze, even though I know a few people my age that do. Not that's not like morally legally wrong or anything. So I think once you're past 18, or like if you, I think if you're um, oh, what is actually no I'm not I I have a vague understanding like the rules of how old you have to be before you can legally drink booze at least in New Zealand, but I've just realised that since that's got nothing to do with the video, or got nothing to do with the subject of this video, I, I won't go into detail about that. Potts, Potts Chappelle? I honestly don't know what that what, what is. Oh, there's more of those narrow gauge coaches. Man. 
Although I did say that if this was actually going to be included with the route, that I'm a gnome, and you've been gnomed. But these mod, these coach models, they don't look bad, but they could do a bit of do with a bit of touching up. But oh, what's going on? Oh God, what's the bit that's? I don't know why it suddenly went back to that loading screen briefly. Oh God, what's the bit that that's? If that's broken the, if that's split the recording somehow, oh God, I'll be pissed. How are we getting this sort of scenery only four kilometers from Dresden Hauptbahnhof? Like this is, this is. I mean, there are some aspects of it I don't like, but this is already one of the most interesting German routes in the game, I think, because my God, the diversity of the scenery is incredible. And I must stress that these are not, it's not like pre-scripted reactions or anything, it's just like ge my genuine reactions to the to like first impressions of this route, because this is the first time I've ever driven on it, not counting tutorials, of course. Hmm. Oh, those buildings there, I mean, it's ripped. Oh, there's a, there's a tunnel cut into a little edge of the hillside, that's nice. Looks like an old industrial site. see it like the game did just randomly go back to that loading screen and just think, I really do hope that obviously I don't know for certain as I'm speaking now but I really do hope to God that that has not split the recording I mean it didn't show the during that bit where it went back to the briefly cut back to the loading screen it didn't show the uh, Dresden Plowen. Dresden Plowen the field. Um, it didn't show the Fraps counter going back to green. Because the way. It's not. No, it's not Fraps, it's Bandicam. Jeez. Sometimes I do get myself in a bit of a muddle. Sometimes. It's. Um, That train over there. Well, it's got glitchy textures for a start. That's something else that I think should be fixed. It's that locomotive. Bloody hell, that's a BR-182. Didn't expect to see the 182 there. Oh, there's a 363 as well. Yeah, the fuel inciting. So yeah, we can already, even though like minutes ago we were just in a very mountainous or a very or a very narrow valley I can see that now we're already in Dresden I'm always speechless to be honest like I've never I don't recall ever seeing such diverse scenery on a route in TSW before like this is incredible that's not sarca that's not sarcasm or anything like that is genuinely what I think this is an incredible route even though, as I showed earlier, there's the problems with the ground, some of the missing foliage textures, although that could just be my graphic settings, and um, and that massive chunk of the hillside that for whatever reason was missing. Hang about. What's with that extra whining noise when you put the brakes on? Let's see if we can get that from the Yeah, just, just about here. Hmm. Jeez, even on the approach to Dresden, there's still a lot of steep inclines. Why am I not surprised? I've certainly learnt a lot about this part of Germany just from this one journey alone. I do remember when I was doing the train spotting video at Dresden Hauptbahnhof this morning that yeah, I was getting pretty terrible frame rates. That's something else I will be getting at some point, ideally before the year is out, is 
a computer that is powerful enough to handle games like this and keep it running at no less than 30 frames per second the whole time instead of occasionally dipping down to the 20s as it stands now barely getting by with this thing but sometimes it gets so annoying and unreliable that you just want to bash it to pieces with a sledgehammer although I'm not sure what good Peter Gabriel would do if you entrusted him with trying to smash up a, a barely functioning computer I suppose for the most part it does the job, even though it does lag sometimes, as annoying as that is. Alright, coming into Dresden, where we can see some more 612s, and curiously, the Talent 2 from Nachvoka Dresden, even though that doesn't actually come with this particular route. So I think this route just get, just comes with the 612, 143 plus Doppelstock Wagen cars, the 363, and that strange rail pool engine. That's it. But of course it has already layered in trains and locomotives from other routes. Let's see if we can actually get the stopping point right this time. Oh no, of course I can't. No wait, what? That's weird, it's still giving five, the full 500 points. Ah oh, well, I can finally... I just... I'm oh, saying I'm terrible with these. No, that has been, uh, this has been, uh, this has been my first look at the new Dresden to Chemnitz route, and yeah, thank you very much for watching, I, I really do hope you've enjoyed it, and stick around for more TSW videos coming soon. Yes, yeah, take care everyone, and I will see you next time. Buzzing always makes it sound like a bee sometimes.